I know what it was. I started thinking about my dad and my brother. And they're black men. They're amazing. Like, I'm so proud of my brother. He's a whole father now <laughs> and a husband. And I just see, see how he is. I just see the way that he is with my niece. Oh my God. Listen, it's the message right here. Black boy, tell me how you really feel. Cause I just wanna build with you. Black girl, tell me how you really feel. I wanna keep it real with you. I wanna live better, eat better. I wanna love better, sleep better. Yeah, I wanna feel so aligned. Sublime. Let me get your opinion on this. There is a movement right now called, and it kind of, it goes back to my last question. It's called the Divest Movement. Mm -hmm. It's a group of, or movement of black women who have given up on the prospect of finding or keeping a good black man. Part of the reason that they've given up is because on one hand, they feel like the majority of black men are um, destitute, uneducated, dusty, mm -hmm. ain't shit. On the other hand, they feel like the ones who are maybe worth a damn prioritize either white women or prioritize light-skinned women or quote-unquote exotic-looking women. Um, with that being said, most of the divesters tend to be darker-skinned black women. Um, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think, you know, colorism plays a part in their experiences that have led to their newfound perspective on this thing. So hearing that, when you hear black women, I don't know if you've heard it in your personal life, who said they're done with black men. Um, what are your thoughts on that? What is your experience with that, if you have any? I, I unfortunately do not have um, people that I know that have said that. Um, but I guess since I haven't experienced it, it would be me on the outside looking in, so I can't really speak to it, but, um, to be honest, it's just really, really sad. It's, it's really making me sad right now thinking about it because I, um, oh my God, I'm getting emotional. I don't know why. It's okay. Take your time. Is the camera still going? <laughs> it is, but it's not live. <laughs> Nobody can see this. <laughs> oh my God. And talk about like, what do you think um, made you emotional just now? Why? Yeah, that's why I'm like, why am I getting emotional right now? It's a safe place. It's just me. There ain't nobody special, I promise. You want a tissue? Mm -hmm. I got you. I got you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, geez. <laughs> I got you crying. I'm ready. How did you do that? Ugh. Well, you know, I'm pretty good at what I do. <laughs> you know, and I'm a black man. So. Am I the, um, I'm not the only person that's cried, right? No. You're okay. Not. <laughs> you're not the only person that's cried. <laughs> if that makes you feel better. It does. That's just so weird and random that I just started crying or got emotional about it. That question. So that that is something to look into. Why did that make me... Um, okay. So you... Um, I forgot what you, what, what, what triggered that? I forgot what triggered it. Uh, I asked about the divestment movement and black women feeling scorn or hurt by black men. And yeah. Oh, and then, um, have I interacted with somebody that has said, you know, I'm done with black men. Sure. Yeah. So no, I have not had that, had that experience. Um, and then I was just, I know what it was. I started thinking about my dad and my brother. And they're black men. They're amazing. Like, I'm so proud of my brother. 
he's a whole father now <laughs> and a husband. And I just see, see how he is. I just see the way that he is with my niece. Oh my God. <laughs> Take your time. It's like, I wasn't expecting to cry. It's like, it's my like, freaking makeup. <laughs> it's okay, I promise. Jeez. It is okay. It is okay. Um, I'm, I'm so proud of him. So. I think the reason why I'm crying is because seeing them and then hearing that women have said, like black women have said, like I'm done with black men. It's, it's um, kind of, it's, obviously it saddens me because I look at my father and my brother and I'm like, there's not all black men are trash. Mm. And so it's like, you've given up when you, you could very well meet <laughs> that one black man because they're still out there. Not all black men, no. So it's like, um, I think it's the, the hopelessness in that statement when you said, I'm just, I'm done with black men. It's like, you just, you've given up hopeless when I know for a fact, just looking at the two examples that I have in my life, there are still good black men out there. Why that made me so emotional, like I said, <laughs> it just caught me off guard, I guess. Yeah. Um, but so yeah, that, that makes me sad to hear those. I haven't heard personally in, um, women that I've interacted with in my life that have said, you know, I'm done with black men. No, I have not heard that personally, but knowing that that's a conversation. It's a pretty big one too. That's, that's, what's crazy. Like I had a, we did a, a live stream and I had a four hour conversation with the divester and we kind of covered all of her not her personal experience, but all of their, I guess, political talking points, right? And um, the the thing that stood out to me wasn't necessarily my conversation with her. It was the um, one of the guys who came up afterwards, you know, because um, I have people come up on the stream and ask questions or make comments. And he grew up with her, not, not grew up with her, I'm sorry. He grew up in the same neighborhood that she came from. And um, he was like, I understand why she thinks that, because everything that she thinks of black men is informed by that neighborhood, is inf like the criminal, the, this, it's all there. So she was probably traumatized early on in her mm -hmm. life and it set a precedent for her expectations of black men. And it, it's almost like it's sad mm -hmm. because it's. Her son will be a black man, whether she gets with her dream white man or not. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it even like reinforces the inferiority that we feel as a people, you know. So um, I always like to get women's perspective on on that because it's it's a it's a pretty big they're moving. They are moving. Yeah. Mm. So let me let me ask you this and we'll close out. Um Part of the reason this is important to me is because I believe that women are the gatekeepers of the future. Like women literally decide who gets replicated and who doesn't, right? Um, mm. And as a community right now, our women are selecting the lowest common denominator to replicate. They're not selecting the great fathers and great men. They're selecting the rappers and this and that. Um, and, and that's why for me, you know, it, uh, 
it sucks to see that when black women tend to think of a black man, they don't think of your dad or your brother or men like that. They think of the toxic, the futures, the pookies, the ray rays. Mm -hmm. uh, so what is it that you think men are missing in their understanding of women? Like if, if you can if you can give men a peek behind the curtain, what do you think we if we understood this about women, the good guys would have a better, easier time, easier, better chances, whatever the case may be. The the bad guys would be able to turn over a new leaf. What what tell tell me your like some nuggets that you feel like men could really use to better to better dialogue with y'all. <laughs> First of all, we're not emotionally wired the same way. Um, there's this book called um, <laughs> something about women are like spaghetti, men are like waffles. So men think they compartmentalize. They can only focus on one thing at a time. Women, we, we can be focused on a lot of stuff, have a lot of stuff going on. And um, also, like, like I said, our emotional makeup is not the same. Um, plus, men naturally need to feel respected. Women naturally need to feel loved. So if there's an imbalance, it's called the crazy cycle. So you're just going to be going around in this freaking crazy cycle. Nobody's going to be like, I, so <laughs> I know personally if I don't feel loved, I'm not going to feel the need to respect you and vice versa. If, you, if, if a man feels like he's not being respected, he's not going to have the enthusiasm to love you. That's, yeah, that's one of the biggest things that I've learned. Um, so, and, and like love languages. What is it that makes you feel, that fills your, your tank? And the other person being able to cater to that because naturally, um, I mean, I've, there's a book called um, The Five Love Languages is what I'm referring to. So naturally, the way that we perceive love and what fills our tank, we're gonna naturally want to do the same thing for the other person, but they're not gonna receive it as a form of love because that's not their love language. So it's like learning each other, each other's love, love language. So like, or what makes you feel respected as a man? And being able to do that and then vice versa. What makes you feel loved as a woman? That's the, that, that's the natural needs that I've learned between a man and a woman. The man wants to be respected and wants to feel respected, and the woman wants to feel loved. I hope I answered your question. You did, you did. Okay, so ask me a question, anything. I've been a man for a while, so hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> hopefully I, can, I can offer some insight. Okay, um, so based on what I just said, is do you find any validity in that, any truth in that? Does it resonate with you? It does. It does, especially the five love languages part, because I learned that cheat code a while ago, right? Because um, I found myself doing stuff for people that I would have really valued, but they didn't interpret it as valuable in the way that I would have until I realized that, oh, I'm speaking French and they only speak Spanish, right? Um, however, the only place that I would kind of put an asterisk is, um, if you, if a woman feels love, she will respect you. I think unfortunately what's happening right now, especially in our um, community is that because of trauma, because of experiences in childhood, whatever the case may be. Some people are actually uncomfortable mm -hmm. uh, being loved mm -hmm. and they might not even recognize it, mm -hmm. but like um, 
peace feels like feels scary because chaos is their norm, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, or or you know, the guy who actually loves me, that the guy who actually likes me, he uh it's easier for me to take him for granted because he's here. Whereas I'm used to earning a guy and I, I want to prove to this bad boy and whatever the case may be. So like men in the barbershops are saying, no, that's not true. Loving a woman doesn't mean she's going to respect you or even want you. Right. Because we're seeing the the guys who are actually loving properly getting played. They're the ones getting cheated on and, and, and left on red and, and all the, all the things. So I think, I think unfortunately what I've learned in my short time is that uh, this thing is not a science, it's an art form, right? And thankfully I know how to ask the right questions to ascertain where the trauma is, if there's trauma, if there is trauma, but where it is and if it's something worth navigating or not. But um, yeah, guys, guys, guys are, guys are having a tough time with women these days. Apparently, vice versa. And that's why I'm trying to do this. I'm trying to give uh, or help men get an insight into the female psyche and hopefully vice versa as well with some of my responses. But, yeah. Did you get any kind of insight, different, a different take for, for me or anything? I hope yes, I helped. Yes and no. Yes and no. It's both, right? Because... In as much as your life experience is different um, than any other woman I've interviewed, there are some consistencies. Um, there were some things, some takes that were surprising. But um, hmm. yeah, but uh, it, it's like I said, I want this to be a library. So like you can see the consistencies and like 50 black women all think this about this thing. But then they deviate here, 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 here and here. Um, but yeah. Is it? <laughs> Hopefully that was painless. It 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 was, <laughs> but you definitely tugged on my heartstrings there and got me. I'm a documentary filmmaker. That's what I do. Jeez, it just came out of nowhere though. Mm -hmm. 